Okay, well today we're going to be getting into lesson 5.4, a little more advanced factoring. Uh, if you look at example 1, uh, right here at the top of the page, it's actually some review. We learned how to do some factoring, uh, you know, just the other day. What we learned is that uh, we'd look at this constant term of 36. We'd look for two numbers to multiply to 36. At the same time, we'd look for those same two numbers to add up to the middle term of 13. Now, just cutting to the chase, what you can do is eventually find the right combination. In this regard, choose a 9 and a 4. 9 times 4 is 36. However, 9 plus 4 would actually add up to 13. And very plain and simply, you could get x plus 9, x plus 4. Of course, you could have switched it, writing x plus 4 first and then x plus 9. But uh, these are your two binomials that you could multiply to x squared plus 13x plus 36. Now, today, we're going to look at problems that are very, very, very different. The biggest difference you're going to see is that the coefficient of x squared is no longer just a 1. In fact, it's now a 3. And this changes everything, really. This uh, makes the problem quite a bit different. Now, it must be said that before you even begin to start factoring this down, you should always first check and see if there is a greatest common factor that you could actually divide out of all three of these terms. Here I have a 3x squared, a 5x, and a minus 2. It must be said that there is no number other than 1 that divides into a 3, a 5, and a negative 2. This is going to be important as we move on to other problems. Uh, you really must check this first. But uh, needless to say, once we've established that there isn't a common factor, and of course there is now a 3x squared out in front, we're going to proceed just as we have in the past. We're looking for two numbers to multiply to negative 2, at the same time, we're going to look for numbers that are going to add to a 5. Now, at first glance, you might think immediately, we're in a lot of trouble. Multiplying to 2, there aren't too many ways you can do that. And you might notice that regardless of how you'd multiply to 2 with a 2 and a 1, that a 1 and a 2, even with one of those signs being negative, there's no way that those numbers could add up to a 5. But this problem is very, very different. In the past, we always had just an x and an x here. But now, with this 3 out in front, obviously we will need a 3x and a 1x to multiply to 3x squared. That being said, we can now proceed and see if we can get this uh, to factor out. Multiplying to negative 2, well, there aren't too many ways that can happen. You can uh, more or less see that you would have a 1 and a 2. Now, what you can do immediately is actually put those numbers in here. And you can see, uh, for example, that maybe you'd like to have a, a 2 here and a 1 over here. Now, of course, I could have switched that. What I highly recommend is that we draw in a nose and a mouth. And as you see this, this is looking very, very promising. You can see that we'd have a 2x and then a 3x. However... For us to add up to a 5x, you might think, hey, why not make both of these positive? But I'd have to multiply to a negative 2, meaning one of these numbers would have to be a negative. So, uh, unfortunately, this isn't going to work out. If having one of them be a negative, whether it's the 2 or the 1, would mean that we'd no longer be able to add these terms up and get a 5. Now, it's not the end of the world. It just means that our 2 and our 1 really should be switching places. So uh, what we'll do is put our 2 over here and then put our 1 over in this place. What would that leave us to? Well, you can see that we would have a 1x and then 3 times 2 is a 6x. Now could a 1x and a 6x add up to a 5x? Well, yeah, if we were to have one of them be a negative in fact, if this 1 was the negative and if the 6 was a positive, 
Now, for the 1 to be a negative, we would have to put a minus over here. And for the 6 to be a positive, we'd have to have a plus 2 over here. So we would then have a negative 1x plus 6x would add up to a 5x. But negative 1 times the 2 is negative 2. This is our factored form. And thank goodness, now we have found the way to factor this problem. So you can see, these problems are actually quite a bit more involved. Uh, we're going to have to do a lot more checking. And your first guess might not always work. Uh, what you're going to see furthermore is that a lot of times, uh, the larger your constant term is at the end for what you're multiplying, that means you might have more combinations to check. So you get better at this over time, but you just have to continue getting some practice. Let's take a look at number two. At number two, again, this is so critical. You have a 2x squared, a minus 21x, and a 10. Check and see if there's a greatest common factor that you could divide out. Now, as soon as I see a 2 right here, my question is, are the other numbers in this problem multiples of 2? I see that minus 21 is that middle term, and that clearly is not divided by 2. There is no factor other than a 1 that could be divided out. Now, that's very important. We're going to see why in just a moment. Uh, we're going to have to multiply to a 10. And I'm going to have to add to a negative 21. When I say add, though, I mean adding with the nose and the mouth. Now, uh, when we set this factoring up, of course, we no longer have an x and an x. We will have a 2x and an x. Always go to your multiplication. You're going to multiply to 10. And uh, this is what we need to do. There are several ways you could multiply to 10. 1 and 10. Or perhaps we could have a 2 and then a 5. Now, with the 1 and the 10, you just might be able to venture off and get a good uh, guess on your first check here. Of course, with the 1 and the 10, a very important comment is, you might wonder if we should try this 1 and 10 first. We could. I want to say this much. It's impossible for us to put the 10 in the first parenthesis. Sometimes kids look at that and they'll say, well, why would that not even be an option? Guys, this wouldn't be an option because 2 and 10 have something in common. 2 would divide into the 10. And we checked up above and saw that there was nothing in common that I could pull out. If I had a 2 and a 10 here, I could actually factor out a 2 from the 2 and the 10. So I know for sure that the 10 cannot go in this first parenthesis. For that matter, nothing even can. No even term can go in the first parentheses. Now, if you know that, that's going to narrow down your searching. So let me instead put a 1 here and then put a 10 over here. And let's draw in a nose and a mouth. We'll have a 1x and then a 20x. And all of a sudden, things are looking very, very, very promising. Because 1 and 20 would add up to 21. Now, of course, you might think, well, wait a minute. You need to add to negative 21. Well, guess what? If we made them both negative, that would do the trick. That would add up to negative 21x. And don't forget, you always have to check your multiplication. Is negative 1 times negative 10 a positive 10? It is. This is it. This is the right combination that, that we have. Uh, sometimes, as you might guess, you're going to find that your first guess of checking things out won't work. Then you go on to the next possibility. But knowing when a factor can't go into a parenthesis is super, super helpful. It narrows down your search. Let's do another problem very quickly. Uh, for number 3, as we look at number 3, 4x squared plus 31x minus 8. Again, let's see if there is a common factor between a 4, a 31, and an 8. Now, adding to the challenge, you can see that 4 is even. A 2 would divide into it, and so would a 4 itself. 31, though, a 2 would not divide in, neither would a 4. I can rest assured 
that nothing can be divided out. I do know that I'm going to have to multiply to a negative 8, and I'm going to have to add to a 31. Now, from here, we have to talk about ways to check through this. Uh, adding to the complexity, kids can very quickly notice, well, wait a minute, with a 4, there are a couple of ways you could multiply to a 4. You could have 2 times 2 or 4 times 1. Let's just say for the sake of argument that you try 2 and 2. Now immediately what you'll notice is that there aren't too many ways to multiply to an 8. You can have 1 and 8 or you could have a 2 and a 4. I can tell you right now that neither one of these could be possible options. Here's why. If I plugged a 1 in here and if I plugged an 8, you see the problem. The 2 and the 8 have something in common. The 8 is even. There would be a 2 that I could pull out from both of them. That won't work. Sometimes kids will say, oh, no, no, don't do the 1 and an 8. Try the 2 and the 4. The same issue is going to hold true. For either one of these parentheses, you'd see that you've got evens in there. Look at the first parenthesis here with the 2. A 2x and a 2 have a 2 in common. I could factor a 2 out. So what does this tell me? A 1 and an 8 won't work. A 2 and a 4 won't work. That means, most importantly, that we can now realize that the 2x and the 2x is not the proper choice. Instead, let's go to the 4x and the 1x. Let's try that. Here's 4x. Here's 1x. Uh, we'll try 1 and an 8. Now, the 1 and the 8, I know that the 8 cannot go in the first parenthesis because an 8 and a 4 would have a common factor of a 4 in them. If this is going to work, the 8 must go in the other parenthesis. Now look, let's do a quick check with the nose and the mouth. We'll have a 1x and then a 32x. Is it possible for a 1x and a 32x to add or subtract to a 31? Well, yes. If the 1 was a negative, if the 32 was a positive. How would the 1 be a negative? Well, you'd need a minus right here. You'd have to have a plus right over here with the 8. Now, what does that guarantee us? That we'd add up to a 31x. Furthermore, we would also multiply negative 1 times 8. We can't forget that we have to double check that this multiplication is checking out as well. Negative 1 times 8 is negative 8. So this is the factored form that we're going to be working with. Okay, so we're going to continue on. Because of uh, the videos, uh, the video uh, program that I have here only allows us to record 15 minutes at a time, we're going to have to stop here and then continue on. Uh, and uh, we'll do some more problems, just getting some more practice with this. Hopefully it's going to get easier over time. This takes practice, and you just need to hang in there. So uh, please look for part two of this, and we'll be continuing on.